In the previous videos in this series, I introduced Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, showed you a little home experiment, covered some theory and also explained how the uncertainty principle arises. We saw in some detail the way in which the uncertainty principle and wave-particle duality are intimately related, and how uncertainty naturally arises out of the indeterminacy which is inherent in wave-like systems. I also discussed how Heisenberg's uncertainty principle relates to Bohr's principle of complementarity, talked about alternative formulations of the uncertainty principle and also gave some examples. Finally, I talked about how the idea that assuming there is such a thing as a particle trajectory is completely unjustified from the point of view of quantum mechanics and how the measurement problem arising in an environment such as a cloud chamber leads us to the modern concept of quantum decoherence. To finish this series, it is now time to address, perhaps, the most intriguing question, the million-dollar question when it comes to Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Not the how, but the why. Why are indeterminacy and complementarity at the heart of quantum mechanics? Why is there such a thing as the uncertainty principle in nature? Photosynthesis the process used by plants and other organisms to convert light energy into chemical energy that can later be released to fuel the organism's activities. When photons strike a leaf, their energy must be sent as efficiently as possible to the reaction centers, the site where the water molecules are split. But how does nature manage to do it? It wasn't that many years ago that scientists were still baffled by this process, the deterministic world of classical mechanics could not explain the process at all. Photosynthesis was too fast, too smooth and suspiciously efficient. It was not until 2007 that scientists spotted the first signs of quantum effects in the molecular centers for photosynthesis. The crazy idea that quantum mechanics could be at the heart of certain biological processes started to permeate the scientific community. I say crazy because, until then, it had been the consensus that the wet and warm environment of living cells was the last place one would be able to observe quantum effects. When scientists finally considered the possibility that it could be precisely the uncertainty principle and other quantum phenomena, such as superposition, what allowed for the process of photosynthesis to run so smoothly and efficiently, the mystery started to be resolved. The exciton, a packet of energy, has to find its way to the cell's reaction centre to deliver its energy so that the water molecules can be split. If it had to bounce around like a pinball until it reached its destination, it would take too long to get through what is effectively a maze and the energy would be quickly lost before it reached its destination. The uncertainty principle, however, allows for the uncertainty as to where the exciton might be and how it might move. We can never be certain that the exciton is in one specific place, should we want to find out. It's as if nature has found a way in which to probabilistically test every direction at the same time, to simultaneously explore all possible paths and hence find the quickest one, so that the process of photosynthesis can be the most efficient it can be. Quoting from a New York Times article, the idea is gaining traction in the scientific community that certain key features of the natural world have been honed by evolution to the highest possible peaks of performance, the legal limits of what Newton, Maxwell, Pauli, Planck and Albert will allow. These ideas pointing to optimization and efficiency within biological systems, such as the efficiency of photosynthesis, are indeed fascinating. But could it be that we can in fact conceive of nature as a whole as a giant organism which evolves in an analogous way? If things can be done simply, using less energy and resources, while reaching the highest peaks of performance, then it makes sense that this is what evolution will favour. Could it be that what we see in biological systems is simply a small instance of how nature itself actually operates at all levels? This, of course, would include what we call the laws of nature, the patterns and tendencies we observe in our universe. 
If this is the case, then it would make sense to look at the possibility that indeterminacy, complementarity and the uncertainty principle might indeed be one of the ways in which nature has evolved in our particular universe to perform at its highest peak, to be the most efficient it can be, not just in biological systems, but at all levels of reality. If we go further down the rabbit hole, what other ways can we use to attempt to explain the why of uncertainty? What levels of reality could nature have evolved to be more efficient at? And how could this be so? Physicists do not have an explanation for why the uncertainty principle is the way it is. Physicist Patrick Coles notes, and so we say that the uncertainty principle is fundamental and we try to understand other phenomena in terms of the basic idea stated in the uncertainty principle. One could argue that an implication of our work is that, in some sense, the wave-particle duality principle is less fundamental than the uncertainty principle. After all, we can explain it using the uncertainty principle. This is quite remarkable. Because in one of my previous videos, I explained in quite a lot of detail the way in which uncertainty is a natural aspect of wave-like systems. But here we're talking about something more profound. We're in fact saying that uncertainty might be fundamental and that wave-particle duality might just be a particular instance reflecting this fundamental aspect of reality. So it wouldn't be accurate to say that uncertainty springs out of wave-particle duality but instead, perhaps we should say that wave-particle duality is just one particular way we have of talking about uncertainty. Just one particular lens or mathematical framework to make sense of it within the world of quantum mechanics. Uncertainty relates to information and knowledge. Any given finite system, including our universe, assuming it is finite, can only store a finite amount of information. In a way, we can look at the uncertainty principle as a natural consequence of the fact that any physical system of a certain size, whether we're looking at dimension, energy or any other constraint, can contain only a limited amount of information. As physicist Stephanie Weiner explains, very intuitively, if you had less uncertainty for some quantum measurements, then you can use such a physical system to encode much more information. Each measurement can be used to retrieve a portion of this information, and how well you can do that is determined by their mutual uncertainty. Put quite simply, more uncertainty means nature can get away with storing less information, which of course brings us back to the ideas of efficiency and optimization. Perhaps one of the best metaphors we can use to attempt to answer the why question is the virtual reality hypothesis. If we view our universe as a probabilistic virtual reality, we can think of the main pillars of quantum mechanics, including the uncertainty principle, as instances which reflect nature's inherent drive towards efficiency and optimization, in particular when it comes to rendering information. It's almost as if nature is rendering content through us only as needed the saving resources this way. If certain information is not required, then there is neither the need to store it nor to calculate a determinate value for it, which is of course a much more efficient way to run any virtual reality system. In this way, we can speculate that, through evolution, nature has indeed found it more efficient to use complementarity and uncertainty when it comes to rendering information to us. In quantum mechanics, for instance, when we look at complementary pairs, as we saw in previous videos, whenever we know everything about one complementary property, then we cannot know anything at all about the other complementary property, and vice versa. For instance, nature doesn't need to decide a definite position or a definite momentum for a particle unless and until there is a need to render any of those properties keeping as much information as possible in an undefined state while using a probabilistic approach seems to be a lot more efficient than, say, having to keep a record of or tracking the state of every single particle in the universe at any given time. But if uncertainty is at the core, 
the fact that not all properties need to have a determinate value at any particular time, because only some of these properties need to be displayed simultaneously, and to the fidelity that is required, greatly affects the processing that is needed, making things a lot simpler and a lot more efficient. If the properties that we measure in the form of observations are like computed variables rendered to us, through us, by nature, for the purpose of display, it might be a lot more efficient to create certain variables as pairs, the state of each one fully dependent on the state of the other, whereby the algorithm is such that both properties cannot be known, displayed, rendered, at the same time. Maybe we can think in computer terms, although the analogy has its drawbacks, and view such variable pairs as sharing the same memory location. As soon as one variable is calculated and made available for rendering, it displaces any value that previously occupied the same location. In other words, the act of measuring one of the complementary pairs would displace the information related to any other previously measured value, including the value of the other complementary pair. As Brian Whitworth states in his paper, The Physical World as a Virtual Reality. In a similar way, virtual reality screens are typically only calculated when they are viewed, i.e. when interaction occurs. Complementarity and the uncertainty principle would be simply an optimization mechanism in a virtual reality universe, whereby calculating one property of a self-registering interface may displace complementary data. If uncertainty is primary in our universe, quantum uncertainty might simply be one particular instance of it. If this is a virtual reality, maybe uncertainty, somehow defined in a much broader sense, is our universe's default state, not just because not having to have determinate values for absolutely everything requires less energy and hence it leads to more efficiency, but equally importantly, because uncertainty enables actual evolution, the possibility of mistakes, learning, and so on. In this way, we can look at uncertainty as one of the golden pillars of existence, which allows for true novelty, creativity, and choice. Because, really, one can only make genuine choices provided there is at least a certain degree of uncertainty. I can't possibly imagine any good virtual reality game where the players cannot make any real choices. If everything is set in stone, what is the point of playing? In Thomas Campbell's words, how the various players will interact under various conditions is unknown. The simulation is run to find out. If the natural random or uncertain elements are significant and properly applied and implemented, and if the simulation is extremely complex with a large number of interacting players, no one knows how it will turn out until the execution of the simulation is complete. Perhaps nature is running other virtual reality universes where everything is set in stone, where the players are only there for the right. Who knows? But it certainly looks like our particular universe has uncertainty built at its core, and that even though our reality has plenty of constraints, there is still room for freedom, creativity and choice. I guess it can be argued that optimal learning and growth can only take place when the balance between the number of constraints in the virtual reality, the level of uncertainty and the freedom of choice of the players is just right. Maybe our universe is not such a bad training ground after all. I'll leave you with all this food for thought. Thank you for watching. See you next time.